In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve real world proportion problems. So the biggest thing to know about proportion problems is when the problem gives you three numbers and you're solving for a fourth number, which is called an unknown. That's usually when you know that you want to set up a proportion and solve it while when dealing with a real world uh, problem. Let me show you some examples here, and I have a nice method on how to set these problems up. Let's look at number one. Josephina sells helium balloons. She charges $9 for 12 balloons. At this rate, what will Josephina charge for 50 balloons? So you can see here that we have three numbers that the problem gives us. It gives us $9 for uh, 12 balloons, and it gives us 50 balloons. And <clears throat> it says, at this rate, what will Josephina charge? That's kind of like the fourth number that we're looking for. How much is she going to charge for 50 balloons? So here's how we're going to set this up. The first thing we're going to do is construct a word ratio. A word ratio um, is looking at the problem and asking yourself, <clears throat> what two things is, are given to me in the problem? What two things am I comparing? And I'm comparing money, and balloons in this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it like this. Money over balloons, just like that. This is called a word ratio. This is gonna help you organize your thoughts as you move forward. Now we're going to go ahead and set up a proportion. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this little thing up that looks exactly like a proportion. I have two ratios and they're equal to each other. Now, look up in the problem and see what two numbers do they give me that kind of go together. And you can see that um, $9 for 12 balloons, those two numbers go together. We know that 12 balloons cost $9. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that information into my first ratio, which will be nine over 12. Notice how I put the nine in, um, in the top, which goes along with the money and I put the 12 in the bottom, which goes along with the balloons. Now, the last number that they give me here is 50 balloons. Well, we know that balloons is on the bottom, given my word ratio, so I'm gonna go ahead and put 50 on the bottom. Now, what's gonna go in that empty spot? Well, we're gonna put an unknown. I'm gonna go ahead and put an X there because we're looking for how much it's going to cost for 50 balloons. All right, now that we have our word ratio set up, let's go ahead and solve. I'm gonna go ahead and circle our cross products just like we did before. And now let's go ahead and solve our proportion. So I'm going to say 12 times X is equal to nine times 50. This should look awfully familiar to you at this point. So this simplified down will be 12x is equal to 450, giving us our one-step equation. And then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 12. Our 12s will cancel out and we're left with x is equal to 37.5. Now, we have to ask ourselves, what is the question that was asked? The question that was asked was, at this rate, what will Josephina charge for 50 balloons? So we have to make sure that we label our answer correctly. And the cor correct label will be in terms of money. So let's go ahead and write this number in terms of money. I'm gonna do my money sign, and I'm going to say $37.50. Another way to know what your label should be if you look back up at the problem and you notice where your variable lies, you can see that it's in the top, which corresponds to money. So that's going to be our label that we use. Now, if the X were on the bottom, we would have used balloons as our label. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. On a map, five inches represents 100 miles. How many inches would there be between two cities that are 2,500 miles apart? So let's go ahead and set this up. Let's start with a word ratio. I'm gonna go ahead and write my little line and I wanna know what am I comparing? What two things am I talking about in the problem? 
Well, I can see if I look at my numbers, I have five inches, I have 100 miles, and I have 2,500 miles. So it looks like it's inches and miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put inches on the top and I'm going to put miles on the bottom. And if you would prefer to flip flop these around and put miles on the top and inches on the bottom, that is perfectly fine as long as you stay consistent throughout the problem. All right, let's go ahead and set up our, our proportion. We want to look for the ratio that is given right off the bat. And it says here on a map, five inches represents 100 miles. So let's go ahead and write in five inches and 100 miles. Those are the two numbers they give us. And then the third number that they give us in the problem, let's go ahead and put that in its place, 2,500 miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that at the bottom with miles. We're looking for the variable x, which happens to be in the top. It's not always going to be in the top, but in this case it is. All right, we're ready to solve our proportion. So let's go ahead and circle our cross products and let's go ahead and solve. So I have 100x is equal to five times 2,500. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this down. 100x is equal to 12,500. I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 100. That's going to eliminate my 100. And I will get that x is equal to 125. Now, before we finish the problem here, let's go ahead and um, figure out what the label's going to be. Again, you can see here that the X happens to be in the top and it corresponds with inches. So the label that I'm going to put on this problem is going to be inches. So 125 inches. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a couple more real world proportion problems. Now these ones are a little bit different. Now this one is called a unit conversion. And this is, unit conversions are used a lot in the kitchen, uh, particularly when you're baking. When you have to convert different um, uh, measurements whenever you're dealing with flour or oil or um, you know, whatnot, um, you usually use a unit conversion to convert the units. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this problem. So you can see here that we have that one ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. And we want to convert 365 grams into ounces. All right, so let's set up a word ratio to start us off. The word ratio is going to be given to us in our conversion up top. You can see we have ounces and we have grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and put ounces at the top and I'm going to put grams on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my proportion. And I see that in my conversion that they gave me, they're telling me that one ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that ratio. So one ounce is equal to 28.35 grams. And then it says convert 365 grams into ounces. That's my third number. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 365 next to grams and then place my X in my unknown. All right, let's go ahead and solve now. I'm gonna go ahead and circle my cross products and go ahead and write everything down. So we have 28.35 X equals one times 365. So 28.35 X is equal to 365. And I'm gonna divide both sides by 28.35. And you might want a calculator for this to determine your X. So let's go ahead and divide those two. All right, that's going to leave me with I'm gonna go ahead and round this number and it looks like it gives me 12 point, we'll go ahead and round to the hundredths. So we have eight, seven. 
And I need to go ahead and look back at my, um, my label. I can see that my X is in the numerator again, and it's going to correspond to ounces. So my answer will be in terms of ounces. All right, this next problem is really neat. This is a type of problem called a scale drawing or a scale uh, model. So this has to deal with um, something like a model airplane or a model car where the object is either much, much smaller or much, much larger than the original. So let's take a look at this problem here. A car model is being built with a scale of two inches to two feet. Now, let me stop there. A scale is something that kind of determines how much larger or smaller the um, model is uh, from the original. So you can see here that the model um, is going to be, and it's, it's obviously of a car, two inches to five feet. So the model is going to be very small compared to the, the real car, which is going to be five feet. So let's keep going. The actual length of the car is 12 feet. What's the length of the model car? So let's go ahead and talk about the word ratio. The word ratio that we're going to use in this problem, it looks like inches and feet. And we can see that because they actually give me a ratio right here in the problem. That's a one way you can actually write a ratio with the little, um, uh, the little dots like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my inches up top and I'm gonna go ahead and put feet on the bottom. And again, you could flip off those around if you like. Now let's go ahead and write a proportion. All right, so my proportion here is going to start with my ratio that is given. So two over five is what's given to me in my ratio. And the other number that's left is 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 12 feet in the box that says 12. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my variable in the missing spot. All right, let's go ahead and solve this proportion. Cross products, five times X is equal to two times 12. And we're gonna go ahead and solve this out. Five X is equal to 24. Divide both sides by five. And you're probably going to want a calculator for this one too. And that's going to leave us with 4.8. And you can, you can see that my variable is in the top and that goes with inches. So my label on here will be inches. So 4.8 inches. All right, I have two more problems for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at ratio tables. A recipe for oatmeal cookies calls for two cups of flour for every three cups of oatmeal. How much flour is needed for a larger batch of cookies that uses nine cups of oatmeal? So, in this problem, you can see that we're given, we're given information in the actual problem itself. But we're also given this little table here called a ratio table. This is other information that you can use to solve a proportion. So, you can see that each of these given um, numbers here, the cups of flowers, corresponds to the cups of oatmeal. So you can see that this little um, piece of information right here actually forms a ratio. So two-thirds is a ratio. And then followed by four-sixths is a ratio. And then this question mark here and nine is another ratio. So we could use either one of those ratios, two-thirds and four-ninths, we could use those ratios along with the unknown ratio, set up a proportion and solve it. So um, it's kind of cool that you can do that, but we're actually gonna use the information that we're given in the problem here. So let's go ahead and look up above. It says two cups of flour for every three cups of oatmeal. Okay, well, let's go ahead and start by setting up our word ratio. So our word ratio, we're going to be comparing um, cups of flour to cups of oatmeal. 
And now let's go ahead and set up a proportion. We're going to use a ratio that's given. Again, we could use either one of those given ratios that we have up above, the ones that have stars. You could use either one of those because that's information that's given to you in the problem. I'm gonna go ahead and use the two and the three. So I have two cups of flour over three cups of oatmeal. And the question is asking us how much flour is needed for a larger batch of cookies that uses nine cups of oatmeal. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my nine on the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and put an X up at the top next to flour. And then I'm simply going to go ahead and solve the proportion. So go ahead and circle your cross products and that's going to um, set up as 3x is equal to 2 times 9. 3x is equal to 18. And then divide both sides by 3. x is equal to 6. And we see that the variable is in the numerator, which corresponds to flour. So therefore, our label will be 6 cups of flour. All right, let's take a look at one last problem. It says here, fill in the blanks in the given ratio table. Instant rice calls for five cups of water for every two cups of rice. <coughs> and then we're given this little ratio table at the bottom. So let's go ahead and start with a word ratio. My word ratio here is going to be um, cups of rice over cups of water. And let's go ahead now and set up a proportion. Now, where I get that first ratio is in the ratio table or in the problem itself. You can see there that uh, they give me five cups of water for every two cups of rice. That's the first ratio that in the problem. So I'm going to put that as two over five. Now, to fill out the table here, I actually need to do three problems. And let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and let's solve. I'm going to go ahead and put this one in orange. Let's go ahead and solve for this number first. To do that, I need to write it as four cups of rice over X because I don't know what that number is. And let's go ahead and solve it. So I'm going to go ahead and solve it below here using my cross products. So that's going to be 2x is equal to 5 times 4. So 2x is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 2. And x will equal 10 cups of water. All right, I'm going to go ahead and place a 10 there. Now, to figure out the other space, let's go ahead and try another one. I'm going to go ahead and solve for this um, spot here. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up another proportion. I know that I already have the ratio two fifths. And my word ratios are going to stay exactly the same. But let's go ahead and put this next ratio in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put x over 15 and go ahead and solve it. I'm gonna go ahead and use my cross products. So 5x is equal to two times 15. 5x is equal to 30. I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and x will equal 6 cups of rice. And I changed it to rice this time because my x is in the numerator. So that's 6 cups of rice. So that'll be 6 cups of rice for every 15 cups of water. All right, let's go ahead and try the last one. Let's go ahead and fill in the last space. I'm going to keep my word ratio the same, and I'm just going to change my proportion. So I've got 2 fifths. And now I've got x over 25. Let's go ahead and solve for x. Let's go ahead and circle the cross products. And I have 5x is equal to 2 times 25. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Let me go ahead and simplify first. So 5x is equal to 50. And I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5. And the last thing I'm going to do is divide by 5 to give me 10. And this is going to be 10 cups of rice. All right. So I was able to fill in the chart there um, using my understanding of solving proportions. A little bit of work, but um, 
gives it gets us to the solution. All right, that brings us to the end of our lesson on proportion applications.